but the different versions you may have seen in pop culture. And I'd like to try if we have a chance, if we, if we have some time to get into why people even like this idea. Why indeed? It feels like the last two years, the concept of evil Superman has really hit critical mass. It feels like every other superhero thing we saw. And here's our evil Superman. Here's our morally compromised Superman because, you know, it's par for the course. Right. It's just old hat at this point to if you're going to create a universe with superpowered characters, have your analog for Superman. And hey, just for just for change of pace. I think I'm going to make him morally questionable, if not completely evil. evil. I mean, hell, it's paying the bills at Amazon right now. That's basically their modus operandi. Can we put an evil Superman in it? Yeah, because we know people like it, or at least it appeals to some folk. So let's uh, let's jump into it. But before we do, of course, I want to mention that this show is sponsored by viewers like you. If you're watching the show live right now, first of all, thanks for coming. And uh, secondly, if you want to help us out, you can ask, ask a question or comment and uh, use the Super Chats to do so. And that uh, proceed will go into the infrastructure that allows us to continue to do this kind of thing and uh yeah and we'll read it here on the show like austin ingram here who said i really thought snyder's man of steel was going to break bad worse than he did not that he was the superman i wanted <clears throat> but it definitely was implied yes i mean i'm sure if he kept going he would have i mean clearly snyder wanted to do an injustice like story like yeah but what if superman you know lois died now he works for dark side he's just pachoo pachoo pachooing everything and batman yeah, we, has to stop him right because we got that like that is in the movie he might not be the superman prime but that's the future that's the end game that these movies were clearly working up to if they had gotten to go there. And Superman doesn't just get to be evil. He's evil long enough for the Gestapo that exists in that reality to stitch Superman, Superman. crest emblems on, yeah. their, on their shoulders. <laughs> we love you, evil Superman. You're our guy. Right. And he's like, okay, well, first of all, you want to get the S right over here. You know, like, <laughs> he has to be involved in the process in some way. So he's he's all in. And it's not like he's being controlled. He's there. He's like, yeah, I'm evil. It was inevitable because I barely give a crap about humanity in the first place. Yeah, I was cold and detached all the time. Yep. And and uh, so we'll, we'll get into why the, I think that Man of Steel Superman exists, why he appeals to so many people. And why he's like, and and largely why like a morally compromised or a less relatable Superman is uh, is so popular is really really all throughout the collective subconscious right now, isn't it? Oh yeah, I think so. So uh, let's get into some some examples of evil Superman that you may know about in the public consciousness. Um, I mean, I think the oldest one actually would probably be the reign of the Superman Superman, the first Siegel and Schuster story they ever wrote, where it's like, hey, what if a dude in 1939 got superpowers? He'd probably be a dickhead. He'd probably go too far <laughs> trying to save the world. So, like, it's kind of there in the DNA where even the two original creators were like, man, if I got powers right now, I'd probably abuse them. Yeah, I'd smash a car. Yeah, <laughs> pretty much. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's interesting the the development of Superman and how he became what he is today or what he has been for the last like 50 years. And maybe that's why they felt he needed to be an alien because it's like, well, no, he can't just be a human from Earth who gets amazing powers because humanity sucks. We are all, you know, filled with this original sin and everything else. He needs to be a blank slate from another world who we can work off and, in, you know, endow with the best qualities of humanity. Totally. Uh, Bob Gukian or Gukian says, what do you think is the earliest appearance of an evil Superman? I think I, you just nailed it. I think we just said, and again, that just came to me out of nowhere. I'm like, hey, yeah, the, the Superman we got wasn't even the first Superman. No, it's true. Yeah. Uh, you know, because we've seen ripoffs or copies of Superman in the past. Obviously, Shazam slash Captain mm. Marvel was one of those characters who was a derivation thereof. I mean, every superhero really is a derivation from the when source. We material. break it down. When you break it down uh, from aesthetic to the moral code for, mm. to, that he follows. But uh, yeah, I, I don't know about necessarily the most early examples of evil superman but i do know that as we get closer to like the modern era of comics and the more ubiquitous nature of superheroes in film we see that ramped up to 11 oh yeah uh, so similarly uh you know one of the earlier actually actually i think one of the earliest iterations of evil superman actually embodies that nature because it's not superman going bad but it's bad superman it's bizarro yeah. 
Yes, absolutely. A character who I feel has kind of fallen by the wayside in the last little bit, which is a shame because totally. I love Bizarro. He is so simple and yet offers so many opportunities for telling good stories because it's like, yeah, he has all the earth changing, you know, earth shaking abilities of Superman, but his moral compass is alien and inverted. Right, exactly. Uh, and, and of course, the subtext of which we can get into for hours, but let's try to focus on the topic at hand. Yeah. Uh, in terms of Bizarro, yeah, like he's He's either from a dimension mm -hmm. or as you a get more clone. modern with him, he's a failed clone. And that's always fun because it's like when humanity tries to make their own Superman, it becomes this like malformed. We fuck it up. We fuck it up. We, he's Frankenstein's monster. Exactly. We just we use the wrong parts of who we are to make Superman. And, and so yet, as a result, Bizarro is here. And yet what Bizarro has that a lot of the other evil Superman don't is that he has this underlying sympathy to him because he doesn't know any better. He didn't yes. ask for any of this. This was all thrown on him. And in many ways, you want to try and save Bizarro and it affords Superman a great opportunity to show his own heroism and his own understanding where it's like, I want to help you Bizarro because you know there, but for the grace go, I, I could very easily be you and vice versa. I see the Superman in you Bizarro. Right. And Bizarro of course is thanks to the inspiration of Superman, it capable of achieving heroism in his own right. I think that also there's a deeper meaning for Bizarro in terms of like Superman is supposed to be the ideal to which we all aspire. Mm. Bizarro is the, like byproduct of trying to make a Superman mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. Superman's gentle hand on Bizarro suggests his hand on the rest of us, how he would be Absolutely. like, you're going to make mistakes like Bizarro. If it's indeed you go by the clone angle, but even then the dimension ale, you know, the, the, the cracked mirror version of Superman uh, still works, but it's more just like, look at what happens when you invert who I am and, yeah. and, you, and my power. And it's great to see them play with it. I think the last time we actually saw the Bizarro world concept was Tomasi during, uh, what was it, Super Sons, where it's yes. like, yeah, and Bizarro is a dad, too, to boy Zaro, but Bizarro is a bad dad, and Superman is a good dad. Oh, my God. That sucks. <laughs> it, it was a very sad story. And boy, Zaro doesn't want to live in Bizarro world anymore. He wants to leave and go to the main earth. And he's friends with John for a little bit. And I'm like, oh, that's really sweet and really sad. And there's like a whole other subtext here. Like boy, Zaro has to run away from home because his father doesn't understand him. Yeah. Oh, no, yeah. That, that's too sad. That was a gut punch of a story. It really was. Yeah. Uh, King Sport Cal says, unfortunately, I would destroy a city. They make the earth pay me for protection, mm. basically. Uh, I would exhort my, <laughs> I would extort the planet. I would steal the money, though. Ah, so I you're, uh, so you're Ultraman slash irredeemable. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Which, like, I mean, I hear you. Uh, I don't think I would be that, that dark with it. Like, I don't think I would extort the world for protection. Protection from whom? Myself? Exactly. Yeah. It's like, but we'd at least be a little Manchester black with it, where it's like, clean up your act, all you freaking, you know, warlords and dictators or else. Everyone plays nice now. Yeah. Or they have to deal with me. Yeah. I don't know what I would do with the powers of Superman. It's probably why I never pick Superman's powers whenever anybody asks me what my favorite superpowers are. Because it's a lot of responsibility to go yeah. with it, right? And again, as we've said, I think one of the reasons that evil Superman is like, you know, so tempting for writers is because when you talk about Superman, we're really talking about ourselves, right? And our worst impulses and everything where it's like, you know, if anything had gone different, and we see it many times in the story, if Superman had landed anywhere else, if anything else had happened to him, if one thing had been different, it would yep. completely have changed his moral code. It's the nature versus nurture thing. Absolutely. Yeah. What, what part of his him being kryptonian makes him truly superman it's really about the kents and about like the examples that they set and how without them you get all the analogs of what evil superman can be yeah of how uh, different he could be yeah kevin krueger ultraman or gladiator mm. i've always heard the story that gladiator of the shiar uh was a stand-in for superman and i never got it i get it Neither in terms of his cape and his strength and his powers but yeah. i never got it in terms of his character no, gladiator like does the... not strike me as a superman character but he no, was he's, he's like a career military man that's usually wherever we see him yeah now it could be one of those like elseworlds type superman ideas where it's like no what if superman landed in 
you know, in, in their backyard and made a gladiator type character. But oh, what if Krypton never blew up? He would just join the Kryptonian military and just right? be another cog in a bigger machine. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Of course, like you said, once you disrupt the pitch perfect origin of Superman, you get an evil Superman or you get a totalitarian Superman or you get right. like even a morally confused Dubious, Superman. Yeah. yeah. I mean, even just looking at uh, uh, what was it? Flashpoint Superman. Yeah. That one uh, is he has a, he's kind of a blank slate because he just lands and then is collected and then is left in a cage for most of his life. So when he's freed, you know, he does inevitably do the right thing. Mm. But that thing is fighting, though. Yeah. With the help of Barry, you know, Barry's like the first person who's nice to him in the whole thing. And he's like, oh, maybe I can aspire to more. Maybe I can be like Barry. He's my heroic example. Yes. And of course, he's everyone's heroic example. Right, Jeff? Yeah. Uh, Ruben Gonzalez. Injustice Superman's one of my favorite evil Superman. Hyperion, when he's from an alternate world, is evil. And his evil is a good contrast to Marvel heroes. Um, yeah, I suppose that's true. Um, in terms of Injustice Superman, you know, obviously that character is just Superman, but if you push him harder, yeah, I I think what works about Injustice Superman, uh, that we don't see in a lot of these other, you know, Elseworld things is usually when we pick up with him, he's already evil, he's already fallen to the dark side. Part of the fun of Injustice Superman is seeing that slow moral degradation over years from the trauma of the death of Lois and his child yep. to him being like, well, we got to clean up our act. We got to clean up the earth. Okay, that makes sense. Okay, well, now we got to start imprisoning people. And now we got to start fights with other, with other people to protect the stuff we've done. Like, okay, now you're starting to change. And the idea, too, that Superman is this moral heart and center of the DC universe. And when he breaks bad and he starts going to the dark side, everyone else follows suit with exactly. him and the world gets shittier. Yeah, no, he is the guiding light of the DC universe. He's the example. When Superman doesn't work, the new 52 doesn't work mm -hmm. uh, on a metatextual level, but also the heroes fall in line. You see who is like down for going for following Superman's lead. It's not unlike when uh, in Secret Empire where Deadpool's like, it's Cap. I'm going to have to do what he says. Like, Very it's, much so. I don't want to be on the wrong side of history this time. I'm, uh, it, yeah. I'm, I'm so glad you brought up the Cap uh, comparison because that's, you know, so brilliant. And it's, you know, an interesting way to show how these two characters are written. Cap in Marvel is always right, even if he starts out on the wrong side yeah, of, yeah. you know, an argument he'll eventually come around to it. But it's interesting that they afford Cap the ability to be like, no, Steve can be wrong sometimes and have to learn a lesson and figure it out. With Superman, it's like, no, Superman is always right, though, and always on the right side because he's Superman. Hell, Green Arrow makes fun of him for it in the new Bendis run where he's like, you know, I, I hate arguing with you, Superman, because anyone who argues with you automatically sounds evil and like a dickhead. Right. You know, so I just can't do it. Maybe that's the idea, too, where people are so interested in the concept of evil Superman because it's like, yeah, you know, he's always the authority. He's always the father figure. What if we twist that and change and you can't tell me what to do, dad? Right? Injustice Superman is very much an authority figure and a father figure for the universe that he exhibits because he has the history of being Superman mm -hmm. and then makes this choice that everyone who is sympathetic to him would make you know it's like they took my wife they took my unborn child you know i, I i'm just trying I, I i played it safe for this long and now i have to like evolve and i have to grow and i gotta do this i gotta try it this way now and it's like it, he makes a compelling argument it's why there are arguments to be made for like people's backing of either batman or superman in that game slash universe and it's extra sad too because you know it was his connection to humanity you know the thing that made superman so wonderful and so special is the thing that ultimately brings him low breaks his heart cracks his brain and turns him into a murderous tyrant which i totally. think which I think that's another thing to, you know, Superman's connection to humanity and the fact that even though he is super and an alien, he is still human. And yeah. maybe the reason people are fascinated with evil Superman is because they're fascinated with that idea inside themselves where it's like, no, super Superman can't just be human, though, because I know I'm human and I'm fallible and that, you know, it's it, it's a scary, scary thought, isn't oh, it? Oh, totally. Well, I, I can. Everyone is Superman in their own story. And yeah. if I am capable of such error then and superman isn't then i'm not really superman am i and if you bring superman kind of like down to our level 
he becomes this thing that's a little bit more aspirable, but that's kind of like the whole point of aspiration is that you put them up here on a pedestal, so you yeah. continuously reach. It's, it's not exercise if you're not actually challenging your muscles to grow, but uh, moving on. I was going to say, even if we want to take it to like a Morrison in super gods level where it's like, right. you know, when we're talking about Superman, we're really talking about God is right. what we're talking about. <laughs> and if God is fallible and God can be twisted in turn, then that means, you know, very, very Nietzsche's God is dead and we have killed him. Yes. I mean, you can, you every Hollywood hack tries to do a Christ analog for Superman. They sure when, do. When they're wrong in that belief. I mean, just, just, just the father gives their son for the world like yeah that's the most one-dimensional interpretation of superman mm -hmm. you can possibly muster but uh in respect to putting superman on a pedestal of god status one of the things that i think i know personally about superman is that he would never consider himself a god no, or never. the god which you know flies in the face of most judeo-christian mythology jesus himself was never like well, I don't know. Like, you know, you're all the the real God is our love and our belief. Mm -hmm. Like, no, he's like, I am the risen God. Like I am <laughs> like, don't make any mistake. Like I'm going to, I'm going to do all these things to prove to you that God is real. And I'm him here. Like <laughs> Superman would be like, no, like the God that you seek is like in, is, is that voice in your head that says mm -hmm. to do the right thing or compels you to make the right choices. And it's like, I like that better. You know, Same. Morrison's interpretation gets a little more hoity-toity than I'm it typically does. comfortable with. And I get it and I appreciate it. And I'm glad that it's at, it's part of the discourse because when you get metatextual about it, when you get like deeper in the weeds about Superman and what he means for humanity, like I could see it. And in fact, even Frank Miller goes so far oh, as yeah. to create a religion around Superman in the Dark Knight Strikes Again universe. Yep. Where at the end of the whole conflict, they have like the it's like the church of Kal-El or the, yeah, the, yeah. the, the, the church of the first son of the last, <laughs> which we see in future state. Actually. Now Philip Kennedy Johnson dusts that idea. Really? Off yes, he does. We're in the future because remember Superman leaves earth and he's yes. leaving earth right now. And people are like, Oh God, you know, he's left us. What do we, what did we do to anger him? What can we do to show Superman? We love him and bring yeah. him back. Yeah. That, 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 that makes me sick, but Johnson loves that idea. Very much so. Philip Kennedy Johnson is very into the idea of like God seeds and mythology, you mm -hmm. know, just from his alien run to his last gods run to the to the Superman run. I'm just like, I ain't interested in Superman <laughs> being some kind of God. Well, again, it's what well, the idea is, is that the church is like deeply corrupt and fun and only oh, one sure. per and only one person understands it and says it like we're doing like literally there's a character who sounds like you sell in the story being like, <laughs> no, no, you're all wrong. Right. This is, <laughs> Super Superman's not that he would hate that you built. Oh, a religion I remember around that. that. Well, yeah. Where they build that whole town uh, in, in, in Smallville. Smallville. They take it over. Yeah. Yes, I do remember that where they're like they're te they're like reading Clark's homework as scripture and looking and for religious meaning in it. Yeah, exactly. I mean yeah and the that, one lone voice you're wrong <laughs> yeah no he was a dude yeah that's what made him special he was a guy yeah uh dan dragon says uh, i believe the reason why superman or people love evil, evil superman comes down to the fact that we had a purely good version of superman for decades who never once misused his powers and that's not true he arguably did there's a again there's the whole super dickery line where it's like look how shitty he was just on the cover <laughs> of these yes exactly like and by the way like those covers would inspire what happens in the book they sometimes come up with a cover first then go like yeah. make something that reflects what happens in here uh but also you have moments like you know pr I, I don't remember if it's post resurrection but when like you know he doesn't help green arrow you know when he blows yeah. up in the in the thing uh you know he he's really violent for no reason during the 90s like oh yeah he shoves grenades in people's mouths like he's He's not necessarily all he said bad years like anybody. Exactly. He killed people. I think he killed like Zod. Yes, and, he did. Uh, and and generated Crime Buster. And yeah, that's right. He, he he fucked them all up with Kryptonite and everything, which is the one panel everyone looks to when they talk about like, oh, no, it's fine that Superman, you know, broke Zod's neck. Here he is killing a bunch of them with Kryptonite. Right, right. And it's like, yeah, no, that's a mistake, too. Uh, but he goes on to say, now we live in a time where some people want more gray Superman rather than black and white version. A whole 
what could Superman really do if he just cut loose? Yeah, that's not interesting to me, but it is interesting and, to a lot of people, and that's and why. And we see it in Superman versus the Elite, where that's oh the message God. Superman sends, like, yeah, if I cut loose, it would be fucking horrible. And there'd be <laughs> no hope for any of you. If I cut loose, you'd all be dead. So yeah. it's good that I don't do that. Right, right. That's but, uh, That, of course, comes from Joe Kelly's What have, What Was So Funny About uh, Truth, Justice, and the American, the American Way. Way. Which is brilliant. And to Dan Dragon's point, too, further, you know, just so you don't think I'm brushing you off there, uh, even Morrison kind of agrees with you now because that's what they said was the whole point of their new authority run, where it's like, look, Superman is still all loving and caring and everything, but he's old now <laughs> and he's sick of your bullshit everyone right. he's tried to be an example for the human race and you keep fucking it up right so, so now superman has to build his own authority team to put stuff right behind the scenes and maybe he'll be a little you know more serious now he doesn't want to break humanity but yeah. he's gonna stop handling with as much care as he did well, and to that point he also has his powers are reducing and yeah so he's like i can't hold your hand anymore it's like growing up and you know exceeding your parents and fall and watching as your parents get older yeah. and weaker and maybe like they, they're maybe they're they're not quite as sharp as they used to be yeah. maybe they're falling down the wrong rabbit holes and so it makes Ooh, you man. you know it makes you question like everything them, yeah. everything like i i think that would be a, a a real like shake to the system to be like to watch that happen and superman's still like i'm watching humanity do that like, am yeah. I doing it wrong? Um, but yeah, no, that's a good. I mean, it's a good point to bring up. Um, also, want a quick shout out to thank you to to Spidey Fan sixty two for your support. Uh, and uh, what's it called? Scythe Life. What about a new Superboy Prime series? Um, what about it? They uh, kind of wrote the last word on him in Death Metal. John's just like, okay, and now we can put him away now. Right. Uh, that being said, Superboy Prime. An interesting uh, case. An interesting case. Uh, he definitely. I mean. It's Superboy, which, you know, legally distinct from Superman, mm. though he is a younger version of Superman. Um, I, I always thought of Superboy Prime more as a commentary on fan culture than on Superman. Yes, I think you're absolutely right. I think, honestly, like, Superboy Prime, well, when he's used in the modern time. Yeah. Like, Superboy Prime originally was just, like, from the golden age of Superman. Mm. Uh, but yes, every time he's been used since infinite crisis, he is a representation of like the older generation that says like, Hey, things are different now. And I don't like that. My um, world was better and happier and nicer. And you all fucking suck now. Cause you're all dark and grim and hateful and everything. I'm going to kill you all. <laughs> right. And it's like, I guess. Yeah. That's interesting to, to delve into the, you know, the nature of fan culture and how like toxic fandom has its own, like you could love something so much that you can destroy it. That you correct. And, and that's absolutely what Superboy Prime is. You know, he's the fan. He's the worst parts of fan culture. He's the stuff that goes too far and makes it unfun and unwelcome. For everyone else. <laughs> he's the ultimate gatekeeper is what he really is. Yeah, no, you're right. You're right. Yeah. Uh, but as far as th that's, but, uh, but you know, what's funny about that, about how like he, Superboy Prime isn't necessarily an evil version of Superman as much as he is like a like a like a straw man for yeah. you know for 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 crappy fan culture. Uh he, he he does have his own following and he does have his own yes. legion of fans who like agree with him mm. or at the very least want to see more of him on a regular basis. Yeah, yeah. And I get the distinct feeling that people want to don't want to see a new Superboy Prime series because they want to see him redeem himself. Yes, which he kind of did by the end of yes. the of that Dark death Knight's metal. Death metal? Yeah. yeah, where he sacrifices himself. He's like, yeah, I see it now. You know, it's all continuity. It's all connected. Oh, oh, I've wasted my life. I was so wrong. And then he gets a second chance to do it over as a regular person. He's like, you know what? I'm going to put the comics down and go outside. Maybe you should all touch some grass, everybody. <laughs> is really the moral of that story. Superboy Prime saying, if you really love me and are really interested in this, touch some grass, you yeah. weirdos. Get out. Meet some people. Go on a bike ride. <laughs> yeah, really. Yeah. 
uh, Rusky 9110. I think a darker Superman can be has to be handled with nuance. It's an interesting topic if you have something to say past Superman mm-hmm. is bull. Basically, yeah. yeah. Which is where a lot of these break down to where it's like, yeah, Superman's my dad and I hate him. I hate my dad. He represents the authority that is, you know, oppressing me all over the place, which is fair. Yeah, yeah. obviously, especially as we live in times now where oppressive forces are more oppressive than they've ever been. And Superman is a good stand in for those things, isn't it? Totally. You look at like a movie like Brightburn. Yes. Which sucks. Yeah, I didn't like it that much either. It had like one or two <laughs> cool ideas. It's it's so one dimensional and simple. I remember seeing it like after it already come out. Yeah. Like, the, 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 the jury had been out, had come in on Brightburn's longevity. And I was like, I got to see this for myself. And it was just like so obvious, but also doesn't do like the the exciting or interesting or even expected things. Mm. It's just like, here's this. It, to me, Brightburn read really much less as a th- story about like Superman and like the corrupting issues of power. To me, it was more kind of like a, hey, parents, be sure to, you know, really pay attention to what you're doing or you might raise a little serial killer or, you know, you might be raising a school shooter or everything. It's just this school shooter kid has superpowers. Yeah. Yeah. Brightburn is less. I mean, Brightburn uses the it's it's more like it uses the literary device of Superman's origins yes. to talk about violence and its impact on children and raising crazy ass kids. And also how it's like a very like white middle American problem. Like, Oh, you mothers really do have all the excuses in the world for your little psychos. Don't you? <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. No, absolutely. Um, But, but Brightburn is absolutely like an analog for an evil Superman. Like it's yeah. cause I, cause they are like at the end of that movie, they like spoil a evil justice league. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. When Michael Rooker shows up, it's like, Hey, this is a, you know, James Gunn related movie. And I haven't seen the Rook yet. Whereas like, there's the Rook. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but it's so funny. Uh, the idea there. And, um, but an evil Superman, that's another one where they're like, it'd be people liked it because they're like, yeah, look at him killing people. Like this is, this is Superman. And it's like, that, not even close it's just a, no. it's just it's just a halloween movie um spidey fan mentions that uh, if i had superman's powers i'd want to spread hope and save people from harm because there's enough bad in the world and we nice to give people a light in this world mm. i agree um but i but i find myself incapable of even being my best self with no powers it's true again because we're all human and also foul but you, you know what actually kind of comes around to what that guy was saying in a very interesting way the boys which was not a thing in the comic but it's a thing in the show where they're like yes. okay so we live in a world where all superheroes and all superpowered people suck they're the worst they're horrible some of their own making because power is corrupting some because we made them that way because you know we made them in a cold uncaring lap but it's with homelander's kid that the show actually Actually finds a very interesting kind of dimension where it's like no but what if we raised one of them good though what if yeah. we actually gave them love and support and show them that their powers could be used for right that kid might want to grow up to be a superman and we might actually have a real hero in this world and isn't that worth fighting for and it's cool to like you know juxtapose that with butcher who's like no fucking i hate all these supers i especially hate this kid because of who his dad is and because what he took from me but will i be willing to kill this kid knowing that i'm literally killing the last hope just to make myself feel better right which is, I don't think, something that Garth Ennis today is capable of doing. No, no. It's something the show totally found in adaptation. And I think it's one of the reasons people really like the show. Yes. Uh, it, it's interesting how much I like the boys show versus the comic book. The comic book and Homelander in general, that character, uh, he's a he's a straw man in his own right. He's one dimensional yes. joke. He's used to like he's used for shock value and also yeah. as a send up. But it's like in the in the most obvious and like you know, in the most obvious ways. It's frustrating because I know get Ennis is capable of more, but I think his cynicism has overwhelmed his talent. And that's- I mean, I mean, that was all the villains in the boys comics yes. where it's like, they were so cartoonishly villainous. Yeah. And so cartoonishly irredeemable. And also we don't really spend that much time with them in the book. We spend no. way more time with the boys. The show is having more fun with the concept of evil who superheroes. And also the show makes them all a little bit more sympathetic, or at least makes them a little bit more deeper and more complex. A train feels, feels bad because he's an athlete who's losing his way 
they give Queen Maeve her backstory and all that other stuff way yeah. sooner than we do in the book and kind of make her like a weird mentor figure uh, to the other girl. And even with Homelander, we see his shitty upbringing and we see the fact that he's being used by all these other people, despite the fact that he is this super god. It's like, OK, right. that doesn't make him right, but it makes him more interesting. Well, and, it, and it, yes, it makes him more interesting. It makes him more real. Um, it makes him more of a character. Uh, they they change his relationship with his handler. It's a woman now instead of a man. So instead of, right. why don't you love me, dad? Why don't you come to my baseball games? It's, I have a weird Oedipal thing for mom. <laughs> yes. Uh, Luke Varillo says, I never really liked evil, dark Superman fantasy. So the comic, What's So Funny About Truth, Justice, and the American Way, always felt like a good summation of why Superman works better when he's the moral high ground. Agreed. I, I think that um, you're touching on something very, very fundamental when it comes to... Um, superman and evil superman and why he's so like appealing to so many people and it's it's because i think um you mentioned the moral high ground mm. um in a, almost in so many rick and morty episodes rick <laughs> requests that people not high road him yes and, many times and Harmon himself says that in real life all the time yes and and it's like on one hand i get it and on the other, I think there's something fundamental about a person who feels that they are uh, like a, one of the smartest people in the room. Oh, yeah. Who is then told that morally they are in the wrong. Oh, yeah. You see it on the Internet. You see it all the goddamn time. Once or twice a day if you work on Naturally. YouTube. Uh, and, and, and to that point, you'll see that if someone is like put in a position to feel morally incorrect you know they usually have to invoke logic or some kind of like jig in you know, their heels yeah you know, i'm not the problem you're the problem you're weak don't tell me i'm wrong yeah there, there's actually a great like i think it's a tiktok i don't remember but if there's a, there's a good way of like expressing how discourse is done on twitter and mm. how like people construct arguments and how they use argument to try and undermine what's being not said like yes. you know they, they say that you're saying something other than what you're actually saying to win the argument and it's like i love pancakes oh so you hate waffles that that's a completely different sentence i didn't uh, say that we have all. to acknowledge what waffles what role waffles plays in this conversation and i'm yes. just saying you did you failed to mention it and it's mm. like oh but i think that like mm, because really tells of, me a lot about you mm, the weakness of your argument that you did not include waffles right and it's like i i feel like the I remember being a comic book fan and knowing one or two people who loved evil Superman or right. loved the or hated Superman because he would just if because if Superman were real, he would just kill everybody. Right. And I, I just I just remember that that group getting bigger and bigger as the Internet became more and more uh, ubiquitous with our own action, like with, with our with our uh, availability, like we were Cause, able to because people love cynicism and they love contrarianism. <laughs> yes. And it's like, well, we just get all the contrarians into one place and they all start talking to each other and you using a megaphone. And it's like now all of a sudden you're thinking everybody thinks Superman is antiquated and stupid and it feels like that contrarian streak is kind of extended to other stuff beyond like comic books there it's like you don't believe that why are you saying that because you can't tell me what to do that's yeah, why because you can't tell me what to do and superman is the ultimate like i'm telling you what to do because you can't stop me yeah it brings back that father figure thing like i can make you go to bed and make you eat your green vegetables because yeah. you know it's right and i right. know it's right and i have laser eyes <laughs> and i have laser eyes but like superman would never or rather he would would absolutely because he has in the past like think well i'll use my laser eyes but he would always want to believe in you more where it's mm -hmm. like no, no no you know as well as i do the right thing to do in this situation yeah and i don't want to have like I, I won't even bring up my laser eyes as a as a consequence because the consequence is you debasing yourself as a person mm. and that's really much worse than me burning you to death with my laser eyes and then you get the lex luthers of the world like oh i can debase myself all day you bastard why do you walk around as a human and mock me i'm, I'm not doing any of those like yes you are to have it stop virtue signaling me superman right you look at the kill bill monologue everybody loves that kill bill oh monologue. yeah they let do. me tell you like when i first saw kill bill i was like yeah it's a pretty dope monologue mm. but it's also being given by a psychopath which so many people forget bill is wrong because he literally shot a pregnant woman in the head he's a monster 
<laughs> and so he's like, yeah, Clark Kent is a critique on super uh, on the human race. And he like he because he's a god, he sees us as cowardly and mm-hmm. weak and unsure of ourselves. And it's like, no, that's what you he, see, Lex. That's what you see, you psycho. No, Superman makes Clark Kent so he is is Clark Kent is in his, in essence a cosplay. Yes, kind of like. But it's because of his enthusiasm. I, I like to think of it more of a, as cosplay than a criticism, where he's like, "I'm so enthusiastic about humanity that I I can't help myself and I have to participate." Mm-hmm. Uh, ironically, too, to bring it back to the Rick and Morty thing, uh, Dan Harmon, quite famously, also not a fan of Superman, also doesn't understand. There's a great Harmon Town episode where he's talking to his friends about. It. He's like, "Okay, here's how I would do a Superman," and the more he talks, the more he sounds like Lex Luthor. And yes. because he's a good writer, because I'm like, actually, this would be an excellent Lex Luthor story what you're pitching right now <laughs> yeah yeah no i've seen his superman rant and it's it's fascinating and it's funny but it's also just like wow you don't either you don't get it or you don't like it and i and you know that i get it again i think Harmon is one of those creators who does not believe in heroes which there are many comic book writers who i would say same deal brian azarell also recurring thing dude doesn't believe in heroes ennis even too to some extent i don't oh, yeah. think ennis believes in here but ennis likes superman though doesn't he yeah and all you need to do is read Hitman to find out. That's the uh, one thing. That's the one, like, you know, hole in his armor of cynicism. It's like, yeah, but I like Superman, though. Right, right. How can you not like Superman, though? <laughs> and Azarel is like, let me tell you why. Yeah, let me do a whole series. Yeah, a whole Lex miserable Luther series. Man, Lex Luthor, Man of Steel, where I go yeah. into great detail. Yeah. Oh, hell, I was going to say uh, super, his Man of Tomorrow book, which is uh, just that this one too. miserable piece of crap about, like, that looks great by Jim Lee. Which is just where he's like, he's just so weary and angry. And I'm like, that is not right. Uh, NB Yellow Paladin says, uh, how do you guys feel about injustice? Do you think it damages Superman's reputation and give people misinformation about Superman? I think it would damage it if it's bad, but it's a really good story. And a lot of it got a lot of people reading comics. Yeah. I mean, I don't think it damages Superman's reputation any more than like, you know, tool of Ronald Reagan and the government Superman from Dark Knight Returns does. Right. But even that one has the essence of Superman in there. Yeah. Um, I hear what you're saying, though, about putting the fact that Injustice was so popular. And the fact that like more Americans, more people in the world were exposed to Superman through that mm. than through any of like the sources that might give you a truer example of who right. Superman is. It does paint an odd portrait of who Superman is. It, 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 it Because when you grow up, you have an idea of who Superman is just from the culture. Right. And if you're, understanding of culture and your interpretation of the world around you is being developed while you're playing or reading injustice yeah you may have a very different interpretation of who superman is and True we might enough. be getting on like another read because this book is over 10 years this game is like old, is pretty old at this point i mean there was like a couple sequels in between there but yeah but i'm saying like you know but it's been around and yeah. it's only been pop it's only continued to be popular uh so it could be that that influence over time has painted a new generational understanding of superman and maybe not the best light i mean mm-hmm. they, they, they do some stuff later on in injustice mm-hmm. too where they try and walk some of it back and <laughs> everything for what yes. it's worth right luke Varillo, uh did we ever get more stories of jeff johnson's ulysses from new 52 he has a fun parallel origin from evil superman that superman can punch no we never did actually i think it was that ulysses arc and then we never saw him again i think you're right so <laughs> But uh, but that that would have been an interesting ex- exploration. I mean, shit, Hyperion got more play in Marvel. He got a whole event built around him as a cracked, mirrored Superman who teaches, like, you know, heavily doctored American history but loves the country and loves everything else but will kill the shit out of you. Yeah. And even then, that's a different interpretation from, like, the Hyperion that was in Hickman's run. Very. It's a much more pointed Superman deconstruction criticism. Like, if Superman existed in the Marvel Universe, he'd be like this because, you know, the Marvel Universe has less steadfast rules about killing. Well, and then there's also the Sentry. And oh, yeah, yeah. His uh, representation of Superman. I mean, like, from his iconography to uh, his power set, you know, the implication is that, like, it's a super. What, what if Superman were, like, borderline agoraphobic? What if um, Superman was his own worst enemy? Exactly. And it's like, 
as it turns out, I think time told that Century is not interesting. I did like that last Jeff Lemire run. It looked like they were going places with that. They gave him a new suit and then never again. They did. They did. They, you know where they went with that? They went in the Miracle Man territory with That's that. That's right. Yeah. Je- Je- Jeff Lemire just did Miracle Man. I'm leaving Earth. Yeah. Yeah. And let me tell you, like, it's not it's not bad, but it's only because I think Miracle Man is so good. And mm. he just ripped it off entirely. Uh, but Miracle Man is another one of those characters that, like, a- it's Alan Moore's interpretation yeah. of Superman. And... Uh, I would I would argue it's actually more of Alan Moore's interpretation of Shazam. Yes, because that's what it was. Because in England and everything, that's where they resold Shazam books as Miracle Man. Yes, and that Superman, like that that character of of Miracle Man, is really it's like V in terms of it being like you know a reflection of the culture mm. that the writer is talking about, and like it's about character and you know it's I I because it's such an early interpretation, you know, it, during a time when comics were revolutionary or yeah. being revolutionary by revolutionaries, uh, Miracle Man, and he and he comes from different stock. Like, Very. you look at Homelander or Ultraman or any of the other, or, or Omni-Man, you know, obviously all these characters are just Superman. Yeah. With Miracle Man, because it comes from the origins of Shazam, mm he has just the power set of Superman. It becomes something other. And Very. it's like more of a cautionary Superman. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's like, be wary of being a big fan of Superman, mm. but it's not a straight up, like either cracked mirror or condemnation of the which character. again, where if you listen to what Moore is saying now about the proliferation of the superhero movie and everything, he always says, you know, oh, be on the lookout for strong man dictators and everything. Cause you know, this, this is how they get you. Yeah. looking cool and amazing with costumes and uniforms but you know mm-hmm. well, 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 well that's just you know the first course of fascism right right yeah thanks I'm alan. sure thanks alan great 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 take um jay says uh some people say soups is boring but every day he has to live with the idea that he could break the world with a sneeze king supergirl touched on this it's true yeah. king supergirl is really good his up so in I've the heard. sky is also brilliant and I, that's been on my pile forever i was gonna make a video on it I still yeah need to read it. well up in the sky uh i think that takes that concept and goes in another direction because like i never when i was a kid reading superman when i did and it was when he died but like mm-hmm. And going back and having read like a lot of other things, I'm kind of like, I never really thought about Superman as being like, like that. There's a great moment in the end of the Justice League animated series where he's fighting Darkseid. He Mm. says, I feel like I live in a world of cardboard. And it's like, it's fun to have that scene. That Superman is a little more wound up than normal Superman, especially by the end of that story and everything that happened in the last season of Justice League. Oh, yeah. No, they're building on it so much. That's a that's a great show. Um, but I don't know if I like that Superman. He's quick to judge. He's he's really tense. He's constantly bombarded by criticism, and he and he really and he really feels it. I mean, heck, um, that Shazam episode where he basically is super mean and beats the shit out of a kid without knowing it. Yeah, and then Shazam out Superman's him. That was yeah. amazing. Oof, oof. Um, but it also is like kind of a revelation of like this is what we kind of did to Superman. Oops, this yeah. is where he is now. Um, but. Up in the sky is like I, that. That that's more of a reflection for me of what Superman is, which is he can do anything. Yeah. But it's not that he uh, he can do anything. Oh no! It's more like he can do anything, and so he and he and here's what he chooses to do. My uh my other co-host Matt had a really good take on it because you know he's a bigger Superman fan than me. He reads all of it, and he's like, you know, what made Up in the Sky work is that it really tackles Superman from the lens of like childhood imagination where it's yeah. like yeah superman is friend to children everywhere yeah he can he can do all of it because he's superman that's what he does and that's what we like about him and what makes him amazing is, is, is there a line in that book too where superman talks about batman he's like yeah you know he's just really lonely and really sad you know, you yeah. know sometimes i try and help him and, you know sometimes I, I like to make him think that he you know he wins oh yeah no the girl uh i think it's alice asks him who would win in a fight and he says batman and she's like come on he says because it would mean a lot to him <laughs> it would mean a lot to him. like oh that's such a superman thing to say and that would and th- that's like a that's like super that's like batman's suicide note yeah <laughs> you have killed me with that with that line what do you mean it would mean a lot to me <laughs> they do something similar in that lois eradicator book where she's like you know he let you win every time yes, right because you're so shit. sad and pathetic and it's like ah he's dead i can't ask yeah. him if she's telling the truth right. or not all he did was he felt bad for you he felt he, so sorry for you every day he just wished you would stop 
yeah, with your dead parents and everything else, he felt so bad for you. Ah, that like murders Batman, like yeah. you said. Okay. Uh, Deb M, generations have passed, wars have started and ended. Superman has outlived them all, and some random dude thinks he can fix him. Sigh. Um, yeah, well, I mean, like, some of these folks are writers or, or directors or screenwriters or whatever. Superman as a concept is supposedly everlasting. I think if you had asked me like 10 years ago if like Superman would be around unchanged forever, I'd say emphatically, yes. Mm -hmm. I'm surprised by how many like institutions that we took for granted and believed in <laughs> uh, have, have faded away or at the very least have been broken or, or, or crumbled. And I, I believe that fiction is like the great equalizer and it is like the like the true immortality. So I feel mm. like Superman is one of those things where it's like there will always be a Superman and there will always be like these tenants of his character. And he might have to, to like, the culture like Coca-Cola or Mickey Mouse. Except, right. Except like Superman has Superman, I think, has like less stalwart uh, masters than Mickey Mouse or Coca-Cola. <laughs> So Superman has the potential to become different things for different people. Yeah, I'm glad you mentioned that, the different things for different people. Uh, I, I thought about that very much when I was watching that, you know, the Return of Superman Lives documentary, when, again, directors and writers and actors who all wanted to change Superman for the 90s, it all had something to say at the time. And I think there's something so compelling about that movie where it's like, yeah, everyone thinks something different about Superman. And it's true to them, and you know they won't have anyone take it away from them. I'm like, yeah, you know, there's something kind of compelling about that, and something kind of pure, but also, oh no, we'll never have another good Superman movie because no <laughs> one will ever be able to agree. No, no, not only will they not be able to agree, but the audience will not be able to like reconcile the version they're getting. Like, yeah, you could do Superman versus the Authority, the live action film mm -hmm. on screen, and You'd have people who are, you'd have a, you'd, it would be like, it would have like a 45% freshness fresh rate on Rotten Tomatoes because people would be so pissed that like the authority got pants. <laughs> I was really into these characters. Yeah. Uh, Duckade, I felt like they were talking at me. Yeah. They were like condemning me personally. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Duckade, late to the stream, I find a younger me thought Superman Beyond and his edgy hair was the coolest. And now Ooh. I just want Clark to be wholesome and a dad. <laughs> yes, I agree. Um, yeah, Superman Beyond, I loved that episode and I Same. thought that was such a cool idea. Um, but I also was like excited to see him be broken of that spell. Yeah. They do some fun stuff in the comics with Superman Beyond where he's like a firefighter and he's had to start yeah. his life over again and everything. I like that. Yeah, definitely. He's, he's, he's like a Highlander. He's Highlander. So I have lived so many ages and will live so many more. <laughs> Call me LJ says they should have kept Stormfront as his mom to play with the Oedipus Complex. Plus, you can say she did it to keep a pure gene pool. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Talking about the boys. Yes, two I know. Area. I know. That's that's very true. Yeah, uh, they did some really interesting stuff with her, too. More stuff when they changed the show around and made a character right. a little bit more complex. Yes. Because, again, Stormfront in the comics is a fucking joke, as yes, many of them complete are. Complete joke. Uh, Rusky, uh, I think bad slash boring Superman stories are more damaging to the brand than any interesting evil Superman story. Being boring is Superman's greatest enemy. Fair uh, enough. Yeah, I, I, I agree with that. It's making, but like, it's it's losing reverence, I think, for the character, yeah. or or you know, taking it for granted. Um, because here's the thing, like New Fifty Two, they went. They clearly the DC didn't give a shit about oh, Superman no. because they gave didn't read a single panel of New Fifty Two Superman. Didn't have to. He had no effect on the universe. No, but I read a lot of it, and it's like it's so it, it's it's no one has a guideline on what the character is or where they're going or what the origin is. So like Grant Morrison's doing their thing, you know, George Perez is doing his thing. He quits. He has to drop it. Like yep. the, you know, they're doing different shit in the Batman Superman book than they were. Scott in the other Liddell stuff. was like, writing both of them by the end. Yeah. Which like that should tell you why no one cared. Right. Exactly. But it just, and, but Scott Liddell got the job because like they know him. He's a proven track record of being able to deliver scripts. People buy on career. Time. Yes, man. Yeah, that's it. And it's like, if, if you are giving Superman to a career, yes, man, then you don't care about the character and you're not interested in seeing him or, or her uh, progress. Yep. Uh, and Demi I mean, says, it's, it's what like, I was going to say to you, you know, and like as bad as it gets, sometimes you get 
a Tomasi Gleason run where it's like, oh yeah, this is the stuff. Or even like a Jurgens run where they yeah. were both happening at the same time. It's like, oh right. yeah, this is the stuff right here. Exactly, exactly. Now they weren't sales juggernauts, but like at the same time, the universe needed it and they were better and richer for that. Exactly. Like, you know what? Superman Up in the Sky was like, came out around the similar time and it was a self-contained graphic novel. It's just the way they sold it made it better. Likewise, um, I'm hearing Superman Red, White, and Blue is actually really solid as it, well it for is. people who are liking it. That might be the way to go with Superman from now on. Just shorts. Um, just shorts, anthologies. Uh, Tevi wants to know what about Justice Lord Superman. Again, that's basically Injustice Superman. It's another well, Superman. Only that, years before. Right, exactly. But he's I love that progenitor. character. I love that. Uh, I love his costume. It's great. But, like, but he's just Injustice Superman. It, 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 he is and he is it because it's like we don't see the moral decay over time because we join him already, he's already after, done it. Yeah. after he's already gone to the dark side also too it's like you no know, his inciting incident is different it's like like president lex luther i'm gonna nuke the world and Simon's like can't let you do that right Major lobotomy right but then like there's that great moment where he says like are you okay and he goes i feel great i feel great like, like that's that's an incorrect interpretation of Superman 2, where it's like, all he has to do is cross the line. It'd be like if Batman killed the Joker, and Robin's like, Batman, are you okay? And he's like, this is the way. Yes. And then he just like gets a gun and he kills everybody. Like I think that I just pitched something that people would love and would sell a million copies. And it's like so fundamentally not the character. That it, that it only takes crossing the line once, which again, Injustice kind of fixed where it's like, no, no, he just didn't cross the line. One it was many little line crosses before eventually huge line crosses. Exactly. Now, they also do some fun stuff with Justice Lord Superman in the Justice League Beyond comic from, uh, got it. No, well, Higgins wrote the Batman one. Who wrote the other one at the same time? I am time? not sure. Uh, no, it wasn't Yost. It was, uh, oh God, I'm, blanking on his name but it was really good they go to some different angles and show some different stuff with him where it's like that guy calmed down for a little bit mm -hmm. and like you know they found like a tenable piece on his world but then his wonder woman gets killed and then he <laughs> goes nuts all over again he's like okay so before i said i was making the world better and i was trying to help out and everything and i was maybe just a little meaner than superman now i hate everything and now i am going to kill you all actually right was it jt Krull? No, it was no, it was someone we really like. Uh, who who was co writing uh, writing Spider Man by the end with Spencer? Uh, <clears throat> Yost. No, it wasn't Yost. God, why? I I love his work. Why am I blanking on his name? He's so good. Yeah. Uh, Here, you, you keep talking. You, I will yeah, Google we'll, it. we'll look it up. Uh, but Tubez the one says, I think it just comes down to people thinking that there's no way someone is just that good can exist. Honestly, it's sad how cynical and hopeless people act. I think you're hitting it right there, my friend. Pretty that's, much, yeah. That's that's kind of like the the main headline of what I wanted to get it to when it came to like why people love an evil Superman, and it's because it's a combination of people don't like to be told what to do, mm -hmm. and it's a combination of people uh, people can't believe or fathom that a character like Superman can exist. It was Gage. Gage, thank it's you, Christos Gage, dude. Did thank some you. really good work with the Justice Lords characters. There you go. There you go. I yeah. Um. But in that case, like that's that's my thing is like people don't couldn't believe that he's just he's just so unrelatable because he's just so good. Yeah. Which, again, tells me way more about the person saying it than about Superman itself, that that person has a hard time trusting. <laughs> exactly. Jack Ingram, why do you think DC keeps doing evil Superman who Marvel matches who it Marvel matches his morality? Maybe Spider-Man, but we don't get a lot of evil Peter stories. We really don't, which is shocking. I mean, I guess Captain America would be their closest in like, yeah, I mean, he is the moral center. And when, you know, Cap goes to the dark side, lots of other people follow him. But they don't also like Secret Empire was a big evil Cap story. Really, what they've been doing, and this I think is actually to Captain America's detriment, the last like five or six years of Captain America stories have been like, oh, someone's corrupting my image. Someone, you know, Ugh. is trying to, you know, corrupt my image and turn America against me. And I'm like, is, is this the only story we tell with Captain America? Now, I mean, don't get me wrong. It's very fucking topical where it's like everyone is fighting over the iconography of yeah. Captain America. And yeah, sometimes it does feel like Captain America's image is being tarnished and there's nothing he can do about it. Totally. Totally. <laughs> yeah. Now, I, I think Cap and Pete are like two sides of the same coin. I think Cap more so than Pete. Pete's more real. Mm. Like Pete will 
P- Captain America will never turn away, a, a, you know, a hand in need, whereas yeah. Peter Parker will look someone in the face and say, you deserve to die or you deserve what you're getting. And then we'll feel bad about it afterwards. But yes. he will he will make mistakes and make errors in his own morality, which I think makes him more real. That's why I like I like Super- Spider-Man, but I don't worship him. I don't mm. think he is like DC, Marvel Superman. Spider-Man does also have the steadfast no kill rule, which he's bent a couple times, let's face mm-hmm. it, yeah. where Captain America's like, nah, man, I'm a soldier. I'm going to try not to kill you, but if you <laughs> shoot first, you're getting a shield to the jugular. Damn right. Uh, Spidey fan asks if we would consider Kingdom Come Superman evil. Uh, no. He's definitely old and tired, and you know he's definitely let himself slip in many regards. Yeah, he is not evil. He is. He, it's 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 Wade's interpretation of a of a world weary Superman, as opposed yeah. to a like he is darker, but only in the external. Like he once he is actually faced with a true moral choice, like when he actually Superman doesn't have to choose whether he can, whether people live or die. Yeah, they all live under his watch. Like they rarely die. And if they die, it's because they screwed up, you know, where, whereas when he actually is like, and throughout that book, when he finally is faced with like a true dilemma, that's when we see who Superman truly is. Very and, much it, and it's still him. Is it the Samaritan? Who's the guy from the Miller verse yeah. show there that got, it was, was it Samaritan? I think so. They that do something right. They do something kind of similar with him where he's old and tired and he's lived <laughs> by this Superman code for so long. And everyone in his life is like, oh, God damn it. You're so old. These are like 1940s beliefs. None of this matters anymore. Yeah. Why are you even going on about this? Such a weird thing where I'm like, OK, but like you're painting the Samaritan as he is wrong. The evil Superman, even though he doesn't really seem to be doing anything particularly evil, he just lives by a steadfast code, which arguably makes him a shitty dad, and if your family hates you, what's the point of trying yep. to save the world and doing all this other stuff? It gets even weirder too, because the Wonder Woman Lois standard in that show says some really fucked up stuff, where it's like, yeah, but you know, they won't understand, you know, we're in the field, they don't understand the choices we make out here, we should just be allowed to do whatever we want all the time with no repercussions, and I'm like, mm, yeah, I know what? what you're talking about, I don't like that at all. <laughs> I don't yeah. like you anymore. <laughs> yeah, all right, Heinlein. Uh, new type JB Lee. Shouldn't there be more evil versions of Batman? Uh, there are plenty of evil Batman, I'm sure. Uh, I mean, I mean the like biggest there's two was, events. <laughs> yeah, Batman who last literally took over the whole goddamn world by being an evil Batman. There was like literally a whole thing there where it's like, no more evil Batman, please. Yeah, there you go. It was Utopian. Uh, Samaritan's Utopian, from Astro City. Right, okay, yes. But, uh, but yeah, so, I mean... There are other, and what's funny is we, you know, there's there's alternate Superman, you know, like like Red Sun Superman, who yeah. isn't evil, and actually Miller's trying to say like there's something innate within him that makes yes, him that comes like, to the surface every comes time. To, it's Superman. Uh, there's obviously Omni Man, who is like not really an analog for Superman, in as much as he has Superman's most of Superman's like most, the most yeah. obvious abilities, and he's. <sighs> I don't know. I, I I don't think I don't see it. You but, know? Much like Homelander, I think it's this idea of like playing the Superman to like yes. really, you know, tie into their own psychopathy. Where it's like, I'll make them think that I'm this hero and this savior and everything because, you know, no one, no one would ever judge or second guess Superman. Right. And I can weave on in and do my evil deeds. And also Omni-Man, too, with like his connection to humanity, where it's like, well, I was rocking that as a reflex. Right. Yeah, I had a wife and a kid, but I see you more as pets because I'm like a highly evolved alien. And yeah, I know that evolves <laughs> and changes changes as shit goes and the show plays it differently than the movie or the comic, the comic. plays it yeah yeah, mm-hmm. yeah so, uh, omni man is an interesting case is an interesting updating on the evil superman thing and it's also the most literal version of superman is your dad yes absolutely no you can't true. tell me what to do dad man i'm not going to take over the world because you told me to i'm going to go my own way <laughs> exactly so uh why do you think uh that uh the people i mean like what's your what's your takeaway for why people love an evil superman and uh do you see it changing anytime like because i feel like over the last 25 years evil superman has only gotten more in vogue uh Mm. but i think it's reached critical mass i think that like 
I think after I think Jupiter's legacy was a was a straw was was going to be it didn't end up really being it but like the, a straw that breaks the camel's back yeah. on a number of levels. I mean, it didn't get a second season, so I'm going to say it broke something. It did get canceled, but it wasn't like it. I I thought based on the costumes and the like the nobody asked for this and like all this yeah. like esoteric nature of the of the whole show and the and the book itself, I was like. This is going to be it where people go like, I've had enough. <laughs> Stop the trade. I want to get off. Yeah. But I feel like uh, ultimately, like, do you see it? Do you see it swinging the other direction at all? Not unless stuff starts to change in the real world. I think evil Superman is totally a reaction to the way people are feeling. As you said, we are losing faith in institutions. We're losing faith. And, you know, the people that we once held on pedestals and Superman is just such a beautiful surrogate for all those feelings of anger and uncertainty and cynicism and yeah, contrarianism as well too. Superman. He's just a good logo and a good face to slap on all these complicated feelings that people have right now. Yeah. I think so. I think I think you're right in terms of I don't see it changing anytime soon. I don't see uh, the world getting more, I don't know, or, or less cynical. Mm. And I, I think that uh, Superman's iconography and his like just just the way in which he is understood by literally everyone on the planet makes him ripe for exploitation and, and interpretation and, and dissection. And yeah, like destruction. It, Exactly. Like I remember there were books called stupid man or superb mm. man. And yep. like just, just the most obvious trite interpretations. And those were 30 years old. And I, I feel like now yeah, that we're at a place where, you know, super adaptations are in vogue and become their own, have become their own genre. It's not even yes. like it's a fad or a bubble. It's a genre. Oh, no, it's a thing. Uh, you know, you'll see more and more of them because it's just the easiest, quickest, shorthandedest way to, to give a send up or talk about the world or about I, I, humanity. I'm glad you mentioned the shorthand too. Cause that's another thing that's always kind of bugged me about these evil man's or evil Superman stories. A lot of them are lazy for every like injustice and every like generally good one where a writer rolled up their sleeves and is like, okay, let's really dig into the nitty gritty of this. A lot of the time you do just get fucking lazy ones. It's like, what if Superman, but bad. Yeah. What if Superman, but communist, what if Superman, but Nazi, like the, the, the communist one, at least it did something. At least it was trying to say something and it was an interesting, uh, you know, period piece. And you got good back and forth between characters. And also, Hey, that story gave us a very complex, good guy take on Lex Luthor. Yeah. 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 Uh, but Nazi Superman, you know, like whatever, I don't, I'm not interested in any of those types of versions of him because it's just so obvious, but yeah. Uh, new type JB Lee. Uh, to me, Kara is more likely to have an evil version because she's more aggressive and younger than Clark. Remember Red Lantern Kara? Yeah, Kara doesn't need versions. It's just Kara's timeline. I mean, part of the joy of Supergirl and writers have done this forever is like, yeah, we can do stuff with her that we can't do with Superman because no one will get mad at us. Right, because we can't we can't even let Tom King and Bill Kazevely have 12 issues. We're going to make it eight because we know it's not going to sell. Yeah, that's why she's been like a clone and a fire angel and a red lantern. <laughs> why, why do you think her old publication history is so all over the goddamn place? It's because nobody cared what they did with her. Exactly. But she still wears the crest so you can do more with you. You can you can say the kind of crap you want to say about Superman and use her instead. Yeah, pretty much. Uh, Adam Groves giving us some money for our beautiful faces. Well, thank you, Adam, Indeed. for your kindness. And uh, Joyce, am I saying that right? Jace Jensen says Ooh. the most recent Superman movies had him snap a villain's neck and more willing to kill. After that, the evil Superman idea has become more popular, I think. I, I think that uh, it's like what it, it's the chicken or the egg situation um, between Snyder's interpretation of Superman. Snyder gave Snyder gave a whole generation of people the Superman that they wanted the angry cold distant disaffected superman which again as you say was always bubbling under the surface but man of steel was it finally just you know like coming to a boil and yes. boiling over for god's sake like just the justice league snyder cut getting the black suit and having people go like finally like finally he looks like what i want him to look like oh yeah that's absolutely was i fixed him i made him cool finally right it's i like, did it that was me yeah and and it's just i understand why people like that version i don't agree with them i don't think that that should persist but i do get it so don't think i don't but like what you like is 
not Superman. You like a version of Superman that reflects your youth and cynicism as opposed to like your ideals. And don't pretend that a realistic version of Superman murders people or kills for the greater good. And as a result also like has this world weary, Oh, woe is me like a uh, burden on my shoulder kind of attitude. Superman, Superman is inherently unrealistic because when you're a child, your parents obscure the harshness of reality from you so that you can have a childhood. Mm. The, the most messed up people I've ever met were raised by parents before my time yeah. yeah we're raised by parents or not raised by parents or ra not raised by any authority figure uh to to be an adult too early mm. and that that it, it you might be a well-adjusted person you might be like successful but there's there's a part of you that's missing and that's not like fair to you it isn't and superman it, it if if not him then who right like if well we can't have superman be the like uncorruptible you know uncompromising mm -hmm. you know non cynical character mm -hmm. that he is non-denominational right if we can't have that and we must make every character like you know grim and gritty grim gritty or at the very least like morally compromising mm -hmm. um then then what is the example you're countering right? Superman should speak to the better angels in all of us he represents all the good that was put into one person but with all the power we don't have ultimate power did not corrupt him it absolved him and right. helped him ascend to that next level yeah and I, and I think there's something to be said for like wanting to be Superman if you think that it's because he can do anything yeah. like Superman's powers allow him to give us the opportunity to find our own superpower and, mm. in, and, and, and really understand it's like, it's like Yoda and a lightsaber. Yoda Very. is so powerful that he doesn't need one anymore. That's the, that's, that's my interpretation of Yoda. And it's mm. like when you, but people are like, yes, finally Yoda's <laughs> flipping around and using the lightsaber. And I'm like that, that diminishes Yoda. Like, and it's like Superman, it's not about the powers. It's about like when you cut through the powers of the fun to get you to eat your vegetables. And then when you have when you're when you live a life of eating vegetables and having three square meals meals mm. a day and and listening to hours. Superman, <laughs> you become like a well-rounded human being with like muscles and yeah. like <laughs> you know, and and, and, a, and a functioning circulatory system. You know, like you're it's a human being who actually like has all of the pieces the building blocks that make you an adult or make as, you a better adult as, as silly as it is i'm actually reminded of like the major theme in kick-ass 2 of all movies <laughs> where, where their grand you know unifying theory was it's not crazy to want to be a hero it's crazy to not want to be a hero right and do good and help people and affect the world in positive ways yeah yeah that's very think, interesting <laughs> which actually i'm pretty sure that came out the same year as man of steel actually now that i stop and think about it, i'm like wow the movie called kick-ass had a more superman at theme than the superman movie did <laughs> where the man of steel is like sometimes you gotta break necks yeah gotta gotta break gotta crack some necks gotta crack some necks <laughs> my issue isn't even the crack neck like sometimes superman has to kill people that i'm actually not like okay I, i'm not like mark wade i'm not a freak out in a movie theater like i don't necessarily think he didn't have any choice but i also like that's not the problem right that specifically is not the problem it's it's everything. It's his demeanor. It's his attitude. Mm. It's his approach. It's how he interprets information and how he presents himself and how he protects humanity. Like those are the problems. Yeah. But uh, Dan Dragon says something weird, Mister Robertson. I don't know what that means. Here's uh, to you, Mister Robertson. Right. Thanks, man. Uh, Rusky <laughs> says Superman's powers allow him to be the ideal and stand above others. He can be better because of them, but also give a goal for everyone else. It's his true. Greater Superman, power affords him a greater level of morality. Yeah, and he learns more. He's able to, you know, affect more lives and inter and and inter interact with more people. And as a result, he gets to refine his morality as he gets older, mm. uh, which is another big thing. Uh, Sean D coming in late but ever people really want superman evil i don't actually like superman or at the very least i haven't read kingdom come 
that too. Oh. I, I I want to write, you know, I want to like Superman, but if he killed people and wore a black costume, he'd be cool and I could like him. If if I make a wrestling comparison here, yeah, I don't like that white meat baby face uh, good guy there. He sucks. But if he turned heel and started hitting people with chairs and telling the audience to suck it, then I might like it. <laughs> yeah. Honestly, uh, if you think like, so evil Superman is a idea a concept that's not going away anytime soon. No. Uh, it, and it can have narrative strength if it is done with the purpose of telling a story uh, as opposed to just let's do evil Superman and a story will arise from it because mm -hmm. it's been told a thousand times. Sure. Has. Um, but, uh, but if you are interested in Superman and you're like, he never really appeals to me, he's just so white bread and lame. And it's like, I get it. I get it as a kid completely agree. Part of like why I love Dark Knight Returns as a kid was because Batman shows Superman his ass, right? Like, <laughs> the what and, for? And it's pretty dope. Um, and it is dope. It's admittedly cool to watch a human being bring a god down low. It's, it's an Ahab and the whale moment. Exactly. Uh, but if you are looking or you're open to the idea, you know, there's plenty of tomes out there you could check out. But I would recommend something like Superman Birthright or Up in the Sky as kind of an introduction to the character. Superman Birthright is a more modern take on the character. He's a little more uh, relatable because mm. he has motivations that go beyond I want to save everybody. Yeah. And it also like tethers him to like a uh, it, he gets to be an ideal. He gets and it has more modern art. So you might enjoy mm. it that way. But uh it's not as weird and out there as like an all-star Superman. I know that's where a lot of people point to. Yeah, yeah, all-star Superman. I feel like it's a little too esoteric from a lot of people. Like, I, 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 I love it and I think it's great. I think it's one of the most seminal Superman works out there. But if like, you're not into Morrison's brand of weirdness. If you don't like it, if you don't like Superman, you're probably not going to love all-star Superman. But uh, if you get like a footing, I would recommend Kingdom Come because I think you get an idea based on Superman's demeanor and his attitude, where he comes from and where he, why he makes these big decisions. Mm -hmm. um, especially if you're like pretty familiar with DC, you know, like I know Batman and a Superman. I'm pretty familiar with Wonder Woman. Like I think you'll be fine. Yeah. Um, but yeah, uh, and and the Tomasi run. But uh, Doctor J, side rant. I feel like most people nowadays forget about Clark Kent, especially in modern day comics and movies. Mm -hmm. Remember Superman three? Ugh. Uh, unfortunately i do yes uh but i hear what you're saying uh sean d uh i.e john cena roman reigns and hulk hogan fair enough yeah and roman reigns is a perfect example people hate ironically uh roman reigns one of his moves is called the superman punch i fuck you not <laughs> and yeah people hated him for years i hate this white meat baby face he's so boring i hate that he wins all the time he's the worst oh he's a bad guy now oh well now i like him you're right uh, Jace Jensen, anyone can throw a punch. It takes sup a Superman to try and talk down the villain first and use their powers when that doesn't work. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, Zyrone Simmons, evil Superman just feels like somebody just saying my world sucks and I want you to know it. Mm, That's fair. Yeah. Or it the is very a very least, good like, shorthand for it. Yeah, or at the very least, like, this is my interpretation. Like, no, no, it's silly and it's childish to think that the world is, the world that, that, that the world could even generate a Superman. This is real Superman. Mm -hmm. It's like, you i'm sorry that you're so angsty yeah uh but yeah so uh let us know in the comments down below what your favorite uh superman story is and if you've never read a superman story uh, i would recommend you check one out and let us know uh what you thought mm -hmm. um or if you try to get into superman what book did you first read that made you try to read superman and get into I like it that a lot uh louis lucas argano aragon aragano says uh aragno yeah, that's it. Lucas Aragno says, I recommend It's a Bird It's a, by Steven Siegel to anyone who would like to read an interesting comic book about the concept of what is Superman. Ooh, that's a good fun. idea. Uh, and new type JB Lee, for all of Smallville's flaws, I think it did a lot to the Superman mythos and uh, had some really good episodes. The JSA episode is a classic. Agreed. I think the Superman and Lois show is also doing a nice job. It really is, actually. That you know, that is the cure for the evil Superman. You're absolutely right. That is the positive, uplifting, you know, and we get to see the Clark side of him a lot too. We yeah. get to see him as a dad, get to see a lot of different sides of him, though the main villain does end up being an evil Kryptonian who wants to turn Superman to the dark side and steal fears an evil Superman from his yeah. universe and what that could mean. Yeah, and he will. Like he will, because he has sons who will replace him. Like he will turn evil. So, you know, get used they, to that. They they didn't do it this season. They fought really hard again. No, I know, but they will. <laughs> uh, the Milkman, I feel like a lot of character secret identities are being thrown out in favor of being a hero 24-7. Yeah. yeah, I think so. I think it's more because more heroes are, uh, are, are face actors. And so we need to normalize that seeing their faces. Yeah. 
uh, you know, Spider-Man. I'm sure that like if Hollywood could, they would cut a big effing hole in his co- <laughs> in his mask. Uh, but uh, yeah, because everyone needs a team now of supporting characters, so they need to out their secret identity to at least them, so we can justify having a man in the chair and a scientist and everything else for every week. Totally. But uh, we want to thank you so much for hanging out with us. We want a special thank to you. Ugh. We want to give a special thank you to our super chatters who sponsored this episode. Thank you so much for your support and for your great questions and comments. And uh, big thanks to Joel for being on the show. And we'll oh, see you guys next pleasure. time with another episode of Elseworlds Exchange. If you want more, you must check out my conversation with Jim Zub that is in this playlist right now. Uh, it's a really fun chat. There isn't a break in the talk. Like It's just nonstop. And all you get are tidbits and fun and conversations that will, de- that will lead you down a path. If you've never thought about getting into writing or creating you might just be inspired from this episode so check that out uh if you are just ending this show otherwise we'll see you guys next time and if you want more go to patreon.com slash comic pop and check us out there we're going to talk a little bit after this and then uh, get the hell out of here so thanks a lot everybody so long